to this lunch debate uh, about the New Deal for Europe. It is a special pleasure that my president of my political group, Johnny Pitella, uh, has come to address us and uh, start uh, our exchange of views, but I see as well members from different political groups. And for my political group, it's our SND, uh, let's say, room. And uh, I'm uh, very pleased that there are more people than uh, we have, uh, I hope, not uh, seating occasions. Uh, anyway, it's good to have this uh, good attendance. Yeah, dear friends, um, I think we all agree that the European project is in danger more than ever. I would not have imagined myself uh, that uh, we have so many divides and so many gaps inside our societies and between uh, the member states in the EU. And the populism, nationalism is rising from election to election and that's a real danger. At the end this means breaking up uh, the EU that has brought us peace uh, democracy and prosperity in the past, and I think all of us are very much concerned. Of course, uh, we have to solve problems. Uh, people expect us to do a job that was promised by the treaties, that is promised by all our speeches and declarations, and besides the refugee problematic that we will not discuss today, we still have the pending financial crisis and it is a bit of shame that uh, it is now seven years old um, that others have uh, overcome this crisis, but the EU is still in stagnation, partly in recession and certainly in unemployment. But I think a new deal for Europe uh, is our idea to come out of this uh, turmoil and uh, we have to promote and profile uh, key ideas how that could be done. I will not go more into detail because many will speak about it. And I give uh, now the floor to my president, Gianni Pitella. Gianni, thank you. I know that on Sunday, I think, uh, there was a big meeting of uh, leaders in Europe, of uh, my political group, uh, but others will, will have the same meetings and um, uh, look into deeply uh, what is the state uh, of uh, the situation and uh, what uh, capacities, what uh, instruments we have to come out of this negative trend and reverse it to a more dynamic and positive outlook, give hope uh, to the people uh, and uh, I think that's what we are here for and I think we will go out of this room in some two hours with uh, 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 empowerment and uh, new energy to, to work and to fight for it. Thanks for coming, and I give the floor to Johnny and Juan Fernando, my co-inviter is here as well, and others, uh, you will uh, tell your name and where you come from when you take the floor. Johnny, the floor is yours. Dear, uh, dear Joe, dear Lucio, dear colleagues, it is a great pleasure for me to be here and to have the opportunity to make a welcome speech. As you know, I have been uh, together with many other colleagues supporting from the beginning your original citizen initiative. And I am therefore very happy to be here with you at the occasion of the relaunching of this initiative. Allow me to insist briefly on three points. The first point, as you all know, the European Union is a currently facing an unprecedented crisis. The European project is really at stake and the European Union, as we know it, will either survive or disappear if we don't act now. Populist moments of many kinds are putting in danger as Joe stressed, the whole European Union as we saw in Germany last Sunday. The EU has been too slow in addressing the social and economic challenges it faces. The growing divergences between and within our member states. 
The revival of the European economy cannot only rely on ECB monetary policy. Blind austerity must, must be abandoned and public investment are needed. We need to fully use what we have gained since the appointment of the new Juncker Commission. We need, first, a right policy mix in terms of economic policy, the, the flexibility of the stability and the growth pact must really permit new public investments. Second, completing the regulation of the financial sector <coughs> through the achieving of a genuine banking union. Third, a real boost to the European investments. The younger plan is a positive step in the direction, but we need to do more. We need to support riskier and more innovative projects. <coughs> and for that, we need some European tools. A strong EU budget is one of these tools. Do not forget that it is thanks to the pressure of the European Parliament that the issue of own resources is still on the table nowadays. And a high level group on resources, chaired by Mario Mondi, has been set up and will deliver a report by the end of this year. Of course, we have not won the debate. And we will need to convince many opponents about the very idea of uh, own resources. Let me assure that we are taking this question very seriously in the SND group. Isabel Thomas, SND Vice President and responsible for this issue, will, uh, with the full support of, among others, uh, Daniel Viot, Daniele Viotti and other colleagues, Mercedes and others, uh, are working on a position paper on this. Finally, let me be blunt and honest with you. We never, never succeed in our common goals if we do not join our forces in each and every one of our member state, states. Surely, we need to keep on putting pressure here in Brussels, of course, but what we urgently need, above all, is to act with national political parties, national governments, to convince them of the centrality of the question of the EU budget. Otherwise, the very idea of solidarity and the common action will remain an empty, an empty world. As president of the SND group, let me assure that we are at your disposal, Lucio, to support you in your different member states and that we stand ready for common actions in the near future. Thank you very much. Uh, dear Johnny, thank you so much for a very powerful, a very clear-cut uh, statement where we have to go, uh, that we have to use the instruments uh, that are existing, uh, we are not using them, and that we have to have the one or the other new idea uh, to improve the situation. I am sure that uh, you, as a leader in this parliament, uh, you are with us, and uh, that many uh, in this uh, citizen chamber of the EU are with the citizens, and we have to join forces. As you said, a big coalition, outside and inside institutions, only then we can overcome these uh, blockades that are built up by, by some who have no interest and a new deal for you. Thank you so much. I know you have a lot to do. If uh, you... Can I stay? You can stay, of course. <laughs> <laughs> that is, uh, I only want to test uh, uh, how big his engagement is. Normally leaders come and go, but uh, I know you are more than a leader. You are one of us. You are yeah, part yeah. of this Federalist family. That's even better. Yeah.
The one who is definitely uh, part of the family is Lucio Levi, uh, one of the first signatories of uh, uh, New Deal for Europe. Lucio, you introduce us as the key and core idea of the New Deal. Please. Yes, thank you. Uh, I thank I thank you. There are your, uh, Gianni and, and uh, Fernando. For those who come very far, I see many came from Italy. There is space for everybody. You can uh, put the chairs a bit nearer, and uh, you have not to stand. There is space on both sides. We can arrange and be flexible how we sit. Yeah, good job. Yes, and I thank you, your uh, Gianni and Fernando, for their uh, support. Uh, on this uh, initiative, we uh, have organized a meeting between the European Civil Society and the European Parliament. I, I uh, profit uh, from uh, my, my speech uh, saying, saying that uh, we have just received a message from the President Emeritus of the Italian Republic, Giorgio Napolitano, uh, uh, who um, uh, says that uh, I thank you for sending the text of the petition New Deal for Europe. I endorse wholeheartedly the old and so far eluded proposal, which now has become crucial uh, for a significant increase of the own resources of the budget of the EU. I confirm my full commitment for the pursuit of this objective. Uh, I, I'd like to, to, to start uh, I, I'd like to, to start uh, um, my, my presentation uh, with a, um, a recollection of a, a sentence which can be found in the Vento Tene Manifesto. Uh, Altiero Spinelli wrote that if the European unification does not reach uh, the goal of federal union, the old contradictions uh, will return. And uh, this is just what we, we, we are seeing in, in, our, uh, in the, our recent years. War is returning uh, in the periphery of Europe. Uh, nationalism, xenophobia, uh, populism, uh, Euroscepticism, new wars divide again Europe and we return to the old contradictions which we uh, uh, say is uh, so uh, 100 years ago. And uh, also we have another, another economic and financial crisis which uh, is uh, uh, more serious than the 1929 uh, economic crisis. So uh, history seems uh, uh, repeating its, itself and uh, uh, taking uh, Europe uh, uh, towards a new disaster. Uh, what uh, we, we should be uh, aware that uh, there is a, a growing disaffection uh, toward uh, the EU institutions, a, a deepening gap between citizens and the European institutions, uh, which depend, uh, first of all, on the austerity policies without uh, development, without equity, without uh, democratic consent. Europe is perceived <clears throat> as the body which imposes uh, sacrifices, promotes austerity, cuts uh, social e expenditure, <coughs> generates unemployment. So, uh, and another, another, another um, reason for uh, the protest and the uh, uh, gap, the gap between citizens and the European Union is the lack of a foreign security policy. Uh, which prevents Europe from speaking with one voice in the world, w um, from behaving as a, a global actor uh, in uh, um, world politics. Uh, and this uh, uh, shows 
the uh, powerlessness of the European Union in facing uh, the refugee crisis. Um, it's, it's a lack of a, a, a diplomatic uh, plan uh, for facing the, uh, the crisis of the Middle East and North Africa. Uh, so, uh, uh, the, the governments uh, are uh, reluctant to uh, address uh, the, the problem of uh, uh, institutional reform of the European Union. Uh, the approach we have adopted with the presentation of the petition New Deal for Europe uh, shows uh, that uh, we uh, should try, first of all, to uh, regain uh, the, the consent and the confidence of the citizens uh, towards the European institutions. And uh, uh, in order to uh, reopen uh, the way to institutional reforms. Uh, so we, we have decided, starting uh, from reforms which uh, can take place within the boundaries of the, of the Lisbon Treaty. Uh, and the New Deal for Europe is a, a step in this direction. And of course, the Juncker plan is a first step uh, with uh, uh, insufficient endowment uh, because uh, 315 billion euros is uh, insufficient and we are not sure that this goal can be reached uh, so far. Uh, so, uh, we, we have appreciated that the Juncker plan has uh, raised uh, the, the problem of putting uh, um, on the uh, agenda, on the European agenda, as a priority, uh, investment, job creation, uh, competitiveness of the European economy. But uh, the resources of the Juncker plan, uh, in our view, are insufficient to uh, promote uh, a recovery and, and uh, a big push of the European economy. Since uh, the, the resources uh, are drawn, or the plan are drawn from the EU, EU budget, which is, has been lowered below the threshold of 1% of the GDP, of European GDP, and the resources to the European uh, Investment Bank. So, new resources are necessary, uh, which can be drawn from a financial transaction tax, which is uh, on the table of the uh, European Parliament and on the agenda of the European Union. Uh, it, it has been promoted by 11, through an, an enhanced cooperation by 11 uh, member states of the European Union. A carbon tax and uh, uh, euro project bonds, so a loan uh, promoted by the U European Commission. Yes, we are, we are aware that uh, the introduction of uh, new taxes is not uh, a popular issue, but uh, we underline that uh, the proposed taxes do not entail uh, that the tax taxpayers are overburdened with uh, an extra charge. What we are proposing is a different distribution of fiscal charge between the few, the, the rich people, and the many, poor, poor people, between national and European public authorities. In fact, with the financial transaction tax, we want to penalize financial speculation and promote the primacy of real economy over the financial economy. And with this tax, we uh, um, forecast that uh, 30 or 40 billion euros can be 
collected by the European Union. On the other hand, with the, with the carbon tax, we want to penalize pollution and promote renewable energy in order to be able to collect at least 50 billion euros. Uh, I, 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 I recollect that uh, the finance minister of uh, Germany, Schäuble, recently proposed a tax on petrol to cover the costs of the refugee crisis. And of course, we, we need new own resources in order to uh, address the problem of the, of the refugees, of, the, of migration, uh, which uh, require uh, um, uh, an important uh, injection of new own resources. So, uh, concluding, I, I, I say, uh, I, I stress that uh, four points are, uh, should be considered by this uh, um, meeting. Uh, the, the, the goal is uh, uh, we, we pursue is uh, to uh, increase the uh, European fund for strategic investment, which is uh, the fund which is on the basis of the Juncker uh, plan, uh, in order to increase the endowment of this uh, of this fund. Second. Uh, on the agenda, uh, President Pitella uh, recollected one month, one month ago uh, that uh, the multi-annual uh, financial framework uh, uh, will be revised uh, and uh, uh, waiting for the results of the high-level working group uh, chaired by uh, Mario Monti. And uh, we, uh, we, uh, we hope that this uh, uh, report will give a, a strong impulse to the, uh, uh, and sensibilize the, the European Parliament uh, on, the, on the problem of uh, the own resources and increasing, of course, the own resources. The third point is uh, <coughs> The new taxes uh, can be introduced through the channel of the enhanced cooperations. So, uh, within the framework of uh, creating a two-speed Europe uh, with a core, the Eurozone countries, uh, or even a lesser, lesser number of states, for instance, I recollected before, the uh, financial transaction tax, which is promoted by ele only 11 member states of the Eurozone. Uh, so, uh, we, are, we are aware that uh, there are strong opposition from the United Kingdom and other uh, countries which uh, uh, prevent us to uh, promote a project involving all the 28 uh, member states. Four point, uh, the, the proposal should be submitted to the approval of a joint conference of the European Parliament and national parliaments. That is an inter-parliamentary assizes, uh, which uh, um, was already promoted in 1990 uh, in, 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 uh, in Rome, which is an institution which should uh, decide the distribution of a fiscal burden between the national level and the European level. I conclude uh, stressing that uh, here, we, I, uh, as a first signatory of the petition, I represent uh, 68 uh, NGOs, 126 mayors in, uh, of uh, important cities, uh, including Paris, Lille, Lyon, Rome, Turin, Prague. 18 trade unions organizations, for instance, uh, CFDT, CFTC in France, UGT and uh, Comisiones Obreras in Spain, and CGL, CISDUIL, the three confederal uh, trade unions organizations in Italy. 47 
personalities of the world of culture, uh, 50 members of the European Parliament, and uh, among them, five out of six uh, top candidates to the European Commission presidency during uh, the electoral campaign which took place in 2014. Thank you for your attention. Richard, thank you very much, uh, especially for the continuous uh, engagement you have shown because uh, the petition had an up and down and now we want to relaunch it uh, because the idea is good and the good ideas uh, sometimes need time but uh, since they are good, uh, they will fulfill uh, and implement uh, themselves, uh, no doubt. Uh, thank you. Uh, you need uh, uh, new resources, own resources. Is the core and key uh, uh, element and um, myself and others have launched an idea on a recent report on the European Central Bank. Uh, why not to use the profits of the European Central Bank as own resources? That's a new idea that came to us and in fact they make a profit of a billion and more every year that goes to national finance ministers. It's not uh, really uh, acceptable that the money goes to the national budgets and is not staying in the EU budget. So there are lots of good ideas. Thank you. We are now coming to the exchange of views. Uh, European Civil Society meets the European Parliament, the parliamentarians and uh, representatives of civil society. So um, looking on the uh, clock, and we have that problem always, <laughs> Uh, we have uh, an hour and uh, let's say five, ten minutes. Uh, if I look on the list, two minutes, unfortunately. Otherwise, we are running till three, four hours, and you know how that is at the end. Those who then want to speak, nobody is uh, anymore here, or it's, it's too short. So we speak one minute in the plenary. I think two minutes is uh, actually two uh, written pages. So uh, an idea or two can be expressed. Uh, I might, uh, um, if you agree, um, change the civil society and MEP if you want. Uh, otherwise, let's say we have... Okay. I start Mariano Fando, Secretaire Confédéral, Confédération Française Démocratique du Travail. On my list, you are the first one. Um, Mariano, two minutes, and I'm German. I look on the watch and give it. I have no bing bang, but I, I warn you when they are open. Thank you, Mariano. Okay, thank you. Uh, I don't know if I can speak in French or... Merci beaucoup, c'est plus facile pour moi. Donc je m'exprimerai au nom de la CFDT, donc l'organisation syndicale à laquelle j'appartiens, mais aussi de l'UNSA, qui est une organisation française également membre de la CES comme Daniel, et avec qui nous travaillons énormément sur les sujets européens. Et je pense que le collègue de la CFTC, qui finalement ne va pas être là, mais je, je sais que quelqu'un va l'excuser, euh, euh, je sais que je le connais assez bien pour savoir qu'il partagera là, ce, qu ce, qu ce que j'ai dit ici. Donc euh, depuis fin 2013, mais la collègue de la CES va l'expliquer mieux que moi, nous avons au niveau de la CES euh, mis en place, euh, euh, proposé euh, ou même revendiqué une nouvelle voie pour l'Europe qui consistait euh, dans un plan d'investissement massif. Euh, ce qui per devait permettre de dépasser la logique de réduction des déficits et de réformes structurelles qui est la seule logique que, de, de la CES euh, et aussi dépasser l'opposition entre la, la vision de la politique de l'offre et la politique de la demande euh, puisqu'il n'y a pas d'offre sans demande et vice versa et l'investissement c'est à la fois euh, améliorer la qualité de l'offre puisque c'est aussi ça l'objectif et aussi relancer euh, la demande en, en biens et en investissement et en, en, en installation, en, en infrastructure. Donc euh, ça nous paraissait être une, une, une voie très intéressante et c'est aussi euh, le troisième argument fondamental pour, euh, pour ce, dans ce sens, euh, une sortie par le haut du problème de la compétitivité qui euh, est beaucoup trop souvent vue comme une, 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 une compétitivité coût et donc une course vers le bas, vers des coûts de moindre, et, y compris des... Euh, euh, des moindres euh, coûts salariaux, donc des, des salaires plus bas et donc euh, un, un grippage de la machine économique. 